Hello, I'm Bowden, and masks are still a thing. So let's make a cosplay version we can wear anywhere. It's one of Sub-Zero's masks from Mortal Kombat 11. I want to make the mask to fit my face, so the first thing I need is a pattern of my face. I put aluminum foil and duct tape onto a copy of my head, just over the places where I'll need to make my pattern. But then I think about the very basic shape of Sub-Zero's mask and how it covers his mouth and nose. So I cut a strip of foam core and add a little cardboard, then wrap all of that with aluminum foil and duct tape again. I trace the outlines with a permanent marker. Now I may not have needed to do this second layer of foil and tape, but it is nice to have all of it attached as one piece. So I trace that pattern onto some four millimeter what the foam. Now this stuff is stiffer and stronger than typical EVA foam. I score the sides where the foam core strip was, so I can fold that flat shape into the basic mask shape that I want. I cut a hole into the cardboard pattern. That way I can make air holes in the cheeks of the foam. I cut a pair of 10 millimeter HD foam wedges and then glue them in to hold the angle at the nose. I use my rotary tool to curve the inside of each wedge to fit my nose and chin. This keeps the front away from my mouth so it's easier to breathe. I start with the easiest armor plate on the jaw and traced it onto some six millimeter foam. I cut out a pair with angled sides. The mask is mostly smaller plates over the basic shape that I've already made. These will fit along the corner of the jaw. The plates in the chin are a raised S shape over a panel. I cut my first attempt from some 10 millimeter foam and then use a grinding bit to carve the foam into the shape that I want. Probably doesn't go up nearly as high as it should. Time to make a version two. This time, I make it from two pieces, a six millimeter panel and then a four millimeter S-curve. I grind the edges to make angled sides, and that corner panel has a slope to it. The top panels, or the cheek panels, are larger, and I trace the outline of the mask on the cardboard held at an angle that I want. If I cut this line at a 45 degree angle on some four millimeter foam, it'll still fit the profile of my face and sit at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. The trick now is to figure out where the top ridge of the cheeks need to go. I cut out my first set of the top cheek panels and start to get the front angled panel figured out. All I want right now is the curve and how it fits with the top panel. I apply a little contact cement and use a hair dryer to speed up the dry time. And I stick two panels together. Notice that all the edges are cut at 45 degrees. This will minimize visible seams. As I hold it up against the face, I start to see that this version has the peak on the cheek a little too far forward, so I'll try again. Actually, I try more than just one more time. And what you didn't see was the progression of figuring out from the first version of the cheek that I made through until the final fourth version when I'm actually getting all the details to fit the way that I wanted to. It took a few times because Either this wasn't long enough, it didn't match up with this curve well enough when it was glued together, or the big one was getting this point of the cheek to get down low enough to the rest of the, of the face. They didn't have a big old gap. So I'm pretty happy with this. I've got a pattern for this part. So these I can set aside and I can actually start gluing on the mesh that I'm gonna put here so you can actually breathe through the mask. Now it's important to say that the mesh that I'm using is just privacy screen. So this isn't going to be a COVID filter. All this is, is a mesh to cover this up and then I'll put another piece over it. The idea is to wear a real mask underneath this, but this is what I want to make sure that it's blacked out and you can't see through it. I cut two pieces of the privacy screen. They are bigger than the holes in the mask, but smaller than the overall side panel. I can glue the screen on, but still have foam around it to glue the decorative panels onto. I also cut out a second set of screens from some cargo netting. The larger weave of this material will give me something to paint silver, and it'll look more like the texture that's on the cheeks in the game. With the screens over the holes, I can start to glue the panels on. The S-curved chin panel is first. The front edge lines up with a cut fold on the black foam. I attach the lower jaw, it sits right next to the S-curve panel and follows the jawline. I mark on the screen where I need to put glue for the cheek. 
I don't want a lot of excess glue clogging up the screen. Now, my hands are in the way, but what I'm doing is I'm getting the top edge lined up first, then sticking the bottom edge. I start on the ear side of the bottom and then work my way around to the front. Where this panel meets the chin is not a perfect fit. I need to kind of pull the panel as I'm attaching, stretching it a little to close in the gaps. <laughs> I need to add some panels in the front to cap the ends, but the ends of the sides aren't ready. So here's the fun thing. What I need to do is make sure that this plane, right, this spot here continues out in both directions. So I've got to cut everything that I just glued on as flat as I can to this plane so I can put the front on. And that wasn't something I don't think I could have figured out until it was glued together. So now that I'm committed, let's carve it up. <laughs> With a new blade fully extended, I carefully cut the edges to be in line with the front of the mask. I also need to grind down the cuts a little. The sawing motion of the blade left some bigger cut marks than I wanted. I also clean up the bottom of the chin. I don't feel like 10 millimeter foam is thick enough for the front edge. The peak of the ridge just won't be high enough. So I glue together three layers of 6 millimeter foam. 18 millimeters should be plenty thick and then run it through my bandsaw with a table set at a 30 degree angle. This gives me a right triangle with one side shorter and steeper than the other. Which is what I want. I need the inside mouth area to be on a steeper angle, not an equal angle with the outside edge. I mark the top corner. It needs to be just above where the cheek meets. But it needs to be at the correct angle to make the facets of the nose. I make a cardboard pattern for the angle that I need for the corners that go around the nose. Yeah, <laughs> like my protractor. And I cut both sides of the front to match. Apply some contact cement and stick these first two sides on. Now I'm not worried that the long sides hang over the cheeks because I'll fix them after the nose is in place. Now to cut the little pieces that actually go over the nose. Now these are a bit tricky. Even once I figure out the short edge is about 10 millimeters, I still have to cut the sides at a 90 degree angle. If it's less than that, then the seam won't close up. I get three good parts before I run out of my custom triangle dowel. More grinding on the front trim. The inside of the mouth is the most important. I can use a grinding stone to smooth the transition on the outside angles. And curve them more to meet the chin. What is left is the top trim, where the mask meets the face. I can use my cheek pattern again, but I'm going to cut on the other side of the line this time. And it's going to work, but I need the top of the nose first, so I have something to glue to. I cut a piece of 4mm foam and fit it to the bridge of the nose. Then I cut a second, more symmetrical version, and this piece I glue on for the nose. Now I can refine the top trim, getting the best fit that I can. I cut a second piece for the left side of the mask and stick them both on with contact cement pretty much right over the exposed black 4mm foam. Now I feel confident on the sides of the nose, so I cut two tiny strips for the secondary top trim. One side of these is cut at 45 degrees. They glue in along the inner corner of the face. Now there's another set of curves along the nose, which are raised panels, and I cut them from some 2mm foam, and then I put an angle on the top edges. They're placed with the top edge right next to the seams on the top of the nose. The last detail I need are two tiny strips for the inset mouth, and they're glued to the bottom of the mouth. With all the parts assembled, I coat the outside of all the pieces with fresh, thin contact cement. It helps to smooth out the fuzzy spots left over from all the grinding. I let the glue set for a few hours, and then painted the foam parts with Plaid FX primer. Now, all the colors that I'm using are stock Plaid FX colors. I dry brush the cargo net with a bright silver, I want it to stand out for the black screen that's underneath. Most of the face is a metallic blue paint. I'm just brushing everything on and doing my best to avoid the screen. Next, I paint the darker silver color. There's a couple of panels that are a dark silver. And the rest is metallic black. 
Now the mouth could be normal black, but I decided everything could just be metallic colors. All right, the more I look at this, the more I realize these need to be the black too. So I guess I'll paint these black. I carefully add a little watered down black as a wash in places. Now this is just to exaggerate the shadows and then lightly dry brush some silver on some of the edges. This is more for a highlight on the colors, not a weathered chipped paint look. The last thing I need is the elastic to go over my ears. I just glue the elastic to the back of the mask. Most of the materials I use for this project I picked up locally. I put a part list in the description. Now I knew when I started building this in the very beginning that it wasn't going to be good enough. I was going to have to wear the fabric mask to actually do the things that masks do and why we need to wear them right now. So I've got my normal fabric mask on, but the cosplay mask goes on right over it and that is the look that I was going for. So now I've got my Sub-Zero mask, and this thing fits really well. Uh, I've got about eight inches of elastic, goes, goes from the glue point around my ears and back down to the other glue point, and that sized really well for my big old head. If you wanted to try to make one for yourself, you know, maybe you can find black elastic. I've got white, that's all the store had. But if you want to make one for yourself, you can easily resize it from the file that I've got. It's right there in the description. You can download it for free, Make one for yourself, make it fit yourself, and you can make it any way you want. I use EVA foam, maybe you'd rather make it out of cardboard. I bet you you could do it if that's the material you want to use, because I know there are lots of different ways you can make Sub-Zero's mask from Mortal Kombat 11, but this is how Odin makes. So I'm kind of curious, the entire time I've been working on this project, the Utah Saints song has been going through my head. Am I the only one? I want to thank Douglas Goldstein, Jonathan, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.